So this is my brake drums for my Jeep Wrangler. I coated it with uh, polyurethane, two components from 415. And it created a very smooth, fine coating. But then I dropped it in the garage floor just before I was going to mount it. And it broke off, peeled off like this. And it was well, rolling around on the floor. And this is really I wasn't what I was expecting. I wanted uh, a coat on this brake drums that had a high impact resistance so it would last. Uh, so I'm going to strip it off by this nitro morse and then I'm going to powder coat it instead. And uh, now to the stripping procedure, I will just put on this one for 15 minutes, uh, take off as much as I can, put it on another 15 minutes and, uh, and then see how much I can clean off. So I'm working in a ventilated hood and uh, this stuff is green. It comes out like this, so I'm just pouring it on here. And I use a brush to spread it evenly. It's uh, quite viscous and I think it's viscous because they've developed this to cling on to surfaces and not just pour off. So this is how it looks after 15 minutes. You can see how the paint or the polyurethane starts bubbling basically on the surface. And uh, at this stage, I'll see if I can show you how firm it's sitting. I haven't applied the second layer yet, but you can see here. Well, you can peel it off this way. So here's the application of the second layer. And uh, as you can see, this like, it forms kind of foam because it starts dissolving the paint and when the paint is mixed up with the paint stripper it becomes uh, something that can create bubbles and these bubbles are actually good because they make the paint stripper stick longer time uh, that way it doesn't dry up as fast or evaporate off so now I'm just going to do this last one here and uh, then I'm going to wipe off all the paint once for all and we're going to powder coat it. So I'm going to clean this up now and I'll show you. I'm going to take a little bit of paper and wipe off the surface so you can see how it comes out. It hasn't taken all of it but a decent amount. Some places still stuck there for example. But uh, most of the polyurethane is removed and what the black black paint that you see remaining here that's actually the primer the, that was used so you see here it comes off um, and at this point I'm just gonna make sure that all the polyurethane is removed and then I'm gonna take a light sandpaper make a smooth finish before I powder coat it but uh, it's uh, very effective to work with this paint stripper because sandblasting a crosslink polyurethane is a nightmare. So dissolving the paint in this case is much more efficient and requires less energy input. So this is what it comes out like. Of those, some of those pieces that you see there, that I will remove. Because that's gonna affect how they were already loose. So this is pretty much what it comes down to in the end. Uh, I have now removed most of it and as you can see there there is some rust so I'm just polish it even. The uh, trickiest part was actually to get off the paint in all these grooves down here so here I'm gonna use a wire brush to see if I can remove the last parts because I don't want any of the polyurethane paint left there when I powder coat it. Uh, some of it which is uh, is the remains of the previous primer I'm not so Worried about. This is how it looked after I had removed all the old paint and uh, back came this uh, iron oxide reddish surface that you have. So to continue and actually get it as smooth as possible before I powder coat it, I'm now going to apply one of these rust converters. This is a Swedish brand but it's, uh, it's actually just a traditional normal rust converter. What is important with this is that you pour up the amount that you need into a smaller beaker because you can't transfer your brush from your rusty object down into this rust converter 
because then you will ruin your rust converter if you don't use all of it. But before that, you want to shake it thoroughly because sometimes the active e ingredients in these ones are stuck on the bottom. You need a very, very tiny, thin layer of this, and uh, as it uh, reacts with iron oxide, the red rust you see, it turns into black. There are different brands of these rust converters, and I'm going to show you and review the difference of them in a separate video. And you can Google the subject on your own, and you will find that some of them are more efficient than others. Normally you apply a first layer, and then you wait for 15 minutes, and then you do the second layer. And here you can properly see how effective this, these rust converters are. And if we go up on this surface up here, you see how it dries up very quickly. I'm now going to let it sit for 15 minutes, and then I'm going to come back. And this is how it comes out after 15 minutes. You can see how all the red rust has now been converted into something uh, black. A combination of the tannic acid that you have in the rust converter and the dissolved rust, the iron from the dissolved rust. And uh, this is not a top coat, it's actually very porous. So this is an optimal uh, coat for, it's like a primer almost that you can have uh, as a starting coat before you apply your final coat layers that should be the barriers against water in the future. You can also see up here that on the areas where you, I didn't have much rust then the rust converter is not effective so there you can see it shines through the metal but everywhere where it was red it's now black and that where it was surface rust in a very very thin layer that became black with its conversion. So I'm going to put the second layer on now and then I'll wait for 24 hours and then I'll come back here and uh, powder coat it. It's also interesting to know that uh, when you apply the second layer if your rust converter remains uh, pinkish or whitish in its color that means that there is no more rust convert and then you actually been successful in your first layer that you have applied so I'm confident now that I have a properly applied layer of rust converter uh, I'm here using a Chinese powder coating gun that I bought on eBay and uh, I can tell you this is the cheapest version you can find and it's really low quality a lot of things have broken already using it three times but we're gonna do an effort here to cover it evenly now with the primer before we actually put a shiny black surface onto it so I'm applying a very very thin layer here now and uh, this entire piece is now grounded on the rear side which you don't see here as I apply pressure to the pedal on the floor, we create a, an electrical field between the powder gun and our drum brake. One uh, aspect of uh, powder coating is that you really don't want too thick layer on your part. So I'm now going to put it into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes to uh, partially cure this primer so that we then further can bond the shiny black on top of it. So I don't want it fully cured at this stage just so that it melts down and create an even layer. And here you can see when it's in the oven before we close the doors. It's now been 10 minutes. We open the doors and check what it looks like. And as you can see now, it is not any longer powder. There's some areas with a little bit less surface coverage. But I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go on and apply the black layer and that's going to be completely uniform.
So this is what it looks like before it goes into the oven the second time and now I've coated it with the black and uh, it doesn't appear shiny right now. And now it's been in there for 20 minutes at this time at 195 degrees Celsius. Let's see what comes out. And as you can see, I don't know if that comes through. But it's all shiny now. All the surface imperfections on it actually great down. It's also showing when the coating adheres to the surface of the metal. But uh, I will give you a close up when I get it out in the light. This is how it turned out in the end. And uh, as you can see, this is if you're looking close at this powder coating, it's far from a perfect job, but it's um, actually my powder coating gun. It broke and didn't deliver the air properly while doing this. But that's about to be restored. And the coating I have here is now rock solid. It's really super hard. This is one of these, um, the powder in itself is one of these uh, epoxy powders. It cross links when you heat it to 195 degrees. So it becomes um, very tough. Let me see if I can show you some close up. You see the surface is a little bit rough, but that's because the surface wasn't that good from the beginning. But I'm not going to bother redoing this. This is going to be absolutely fine to put on my Jeep. Thanks for watching guys and good luck with yours. But now I have a black drum brand. Uh, I think this is going to actually prevent some dirt and grease or at least dirt and gravel to stick onto it so apart from being a little bit prettier than the rusty one I had from the beginning maybe that's uh, helpful in the end.